हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो ओम विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण भ्रष्टाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नीति नामिने नमस्ते स्वारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चात यदेशतारिणे वेलकम टू भक्ति वैभव कोर्स टुडे वी आर स्टडीइंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंट 1 चैप्टर 1 टेक्स्ट 9 टू 23 the six questions of the sages okay so one by one we will see the six questions by the sages first question what is the absolute and ultimate good good for people in general what is the ultimate good for people in general okay तत्र तत्रांजसा युष्मन भवता यद्विनिश्चित पुंसा मेकांत श्रेय तमशीतुमसी प्लीज दर फॉर बींग ब्लेस्ड विद मेनी इयर्स एक्सप्लेन टू अस वॉट यू एस सर्टेन टू बी द एब्सोल्यूट एंड अल्टीमेट गुड फॉर द पीपल इन जनरल प्लीज दर फॉर being blessed with many years explain to us what you are certain to be the absolute ultimate good for people in general so yeah that's one thing important thing what is the ultimate good for people in general people think many things in life that this is good for me or that is good for me what is the most fortunate thing like i remember a few years back in my poor in front of our main gate nearby our main gate or that police gate there is uh, some uh, xerox shops are there where they do xerox printing at mobile shops you buy sim sim cards recharge and all kind of things you can do from those shops two shops are there near the atm bank so i went to one of the shop and i took uh, also there one shop take photographs mm. here photographs stem side passport side photographs so i went there to click some photographs for some documents i was waiting there standing there then another person came there local person he came there two of them they were there so that one person came to get some printing of his daughter some of the photos so then he was talking with the other person that my daughter has got a chance in uh, air hostess Uh, she got a chance as a job to do the job for air, air hostess he said wow very good other person said very good you are successful you are really fortunate person that your daughter got a job as, a, as an air hostess what does your son do oh, my son is in bangalore he is also doing a job i said wow your life is successful you are really successful person your daughter is also settled getting settled so son is settled what else do you think you think need in life so each one both of them were discussing i was just sitting and listening to them so like shila prabhupa say in bhagavatam 7 canto also it says that like in this world people they praise each other foolishly they glorify pamper each other ah oh, you are successful your life is you are so fortunate person you are so great you are amazing and the other person also thinks yes see others are praising me others are saying i am successful so maybe i am really successful in life so what the definition of success what the definition of absolute and ultimate good for people in general everybody has different some more things okay you get a good job you are successful you got a good wife you successful you got a good husband successful got good children successful got promotion in in office you are successful you you bought a house successful so what is the measurement what is the parameter to of success what is the parameter of absolute and ultimate good for people in general that's important thing and the first question of shrimad bhagavatam you see the first question of shrimad bhagavatam is this please explain 
to us what you ascertain to be the absolute and ultimate good for people in general. It's very important to, because through this question, you can, you can understand the person's mind. You ask someone, what do you think the best in this world? Or what do you think the ultimate good for people in this world? Just go and ask someone and see what he says. Or what do you think success in this world? And see what, what does he say or what does she say? Hmm. So the the goes uh, the Naimisharana sages they ask this question to Sutta Goswami. What do you think? Or according to you, what you ascertain to be the absolute and ultimate good for people in general? Hmm. And what was Sutta Goswami's opinion about that? We'll see uh, in when he starts answering that to that. Hmm. So Acharyas and Goswamis they're always uh, they're always all well wishers of for people in general. They always think good for people in general. How can we do good benefit people in this world? Especially spiritual well wishers. Well, they are especially spiritual well wishers. So yes, so he is asking a question. Uh, they are asking question, the sages to Sutta Goswami, what is the ultimate good for human beings? So Acharyas are always well wishers for us. Hmm. Prabhupada says that interestingly, see here in this purport that um, yeah, this is important statement of Prabhupada. What is that? Spiritual well-being is automatically followed by Material well-being. Okay. Such a heavy statement. Spiritual well-being is automatically followed by material well-being. What do you think about that? And what is your personal conviction about that? That uh, just by having spiritual well-being, other material well-beings are done. What to do? Krishna Bhakti Koyle Sarva Karma Krita Hoi. Just by doing Krishna Bhakti, all of that, everything will be fulfilled. Everything will be done automatically. So the devotees ask questions. Oh, what does it mean? I think in our Russian Bhagavatam class, one devotee was asking me this question. Who was, I think, a lawyer. He was, after the class, he was asking the question that uh, uh, sometimes devotees think like that. Oh, yeah, everything, just by doing bhakti, everything will be done. Just chant, everything will be fulfilled. If, if someone is sick, Someone has got some accident. We just tell him, oh, just chant Hare Krishna. Is it? No. We need to be practical. We need to be practical that, okay, take a person has got accident, devotee has got accident. Okay, take him to hospital. That's there. But what would I tell him? That, okay, we're taking you to hospital. But ultimately, Krishna is the one who saves us. And he is the one who maintains us. So you chant the holy name. You chant the holy name of Krishna. We also chant the holy name of Krishna and depend on Krishna. Whatever Krishna desires, that will happen. But we will do our best. We will do our um, whatever is there up to us. Whatever we can do within our jurisdictions, we will we'll try to do everything. So we will try to be practical, whatever are required. We will do that. But at the same time, we think, we understand that only by Krishna consciousness, we get the ultimate well-being, both material and spiritual. Hmm? How, to under, how to understand, how to explain this statement to even to a, an, a newcomer who just came new or maybe who is not having uh, connection with Krishna consciousness also. How do you explain this to him? That just by spiritual well-being, automatically material well-being will be done. Yeah, different things are there. Like For example, how to be materially successful or how to have material well-being. Hmm? Suppose someone is not a devotee, not in Krishna consciousness and uh, he wants to uh, who sorry yeah so suppose yeah like the person who is not connected to Krishna consciousness and he wants to have his well-being. He wants to be happy in life. How can he be happy? 
So if we explain him or if he can understand this, at least forget about Shastra, forget uh, Gita. We'll, we'll discuss about that later or Bhagavad. Let's discuss common sense. According to common sense, also if someone wants to be happy in this world, in this life, what he needs, ahar nidra bhaya maizunam, he needs more like good food, he needs to have his free space to sleep peacefully. Nobody should disturb him. He should say, I want to sleep as long as I want. And peacefully, nobody should disturb me. I should want a nice, cozy, soft bed. Hmm? Nice as he should go on. And maybe some music goes on or whatever. A peaceful, silent place I want for sleeping. Okay. I want good food. Delicious, tasty, rich foods every day to eat. I want to have the best security of this world. Hmm? Best security of this world. Uh, secure place so that even nobody can touch me or nobody can. There is no worry, no anxiety of like security, insecurity. And maithunam, sexual pleasure. So there's four things. But if someone thinks sanely with his common sense, you can understand, you can see the situation. Nobody can eat whatever he wants. Uh, nobody can eat whatever he wants without inviting problem. You go and eat pizza or burger or something else like uh, I want this, I want that. So more you have junk food, more you had problem, stomach problem. Okay, you can take pizza. How much? How many? You, can, you want to take samosa? How many samosas can you eat? One samosa, two samosa, five, ten, twenty. There is the limit. If you cross the limit, you get problem. How long can you sleep? If you sleep too long, there is problem. You too less problem. I slept that day, one of the day recently. And I don't know, woke up and I was having some neck pain. Maybe while sleeping something there. I went for traveling to some other place and like imbalanced pillow was there. Like it didn't match with me. So something happened. So yeah, you, when you sleep, you get some problem. And which place can there be in this world which is insecure, uh, which is secure? Maybe some, you can make a place secure from enemies or um, thieves and all. But again, birth, death, old age, disease, this will come inevitably. Can you make a death-proof place? This place is death-proof. I will not die in this place. Can you make a disease-proof place? That if this house is disease-proof. Disease no disease in this house. If you be in this house, no disease. If you be in this house, you won't die. No. So if someone is sensible enough, he can understand that he cannot avoid birth, death, old age and disease. And on top of that, Adi Bhutik, Adi Atmik, uh, and uh, Adi Devi Kleshas are there. Sufferings are there. So one can easily understand by his common sense, neutrally thinking of his common sense, that he cannot be happy ultimately in this world. Even if he thinks for a... Uh, yeah, when first canto only we'll see in the fifth chapter, Narad Muni will say that, that uh, one nice verse, the Seibo Heto Prayoti Heto Kovija. And that part, Prashila Prabhupada discusses that in this world there is these sufferings, miseries, and mixed happiness. There is two things in this world. One is miseries, another thing is mixed happiness. So miseries means pure miseries. And when Prabhupada talks about happiness, Prabhupada doesn't say pure happiness. He says mixed happiness. Even if someone gets happiness, it's a mixed only. If you're too much happy, then you invite miseries. So then how can by spiritual well-being someone can have material well-being? Yeah, if someone has spiritual understanding, spiritual perspective, then he can get this perspective to accept these miseries in whichever spirit and he can uh, go beyond. The, if, if he transcends that, he, if he transcends that level with his mentality perspective, then he can go through them through spiritual understanding, spiritual perspective. Like I was hearing one interview of one on youtube one interview of one uh, command ex commando of india indian military commando commando officer his ex means he is retired now 
So someone one YouTuber took his interview on internet, YouTube. And then his commando training is really, really is, uh, like the topmost training. I think in all the countries they like that. India is like this. NSG commandos. For different layers, different levels, then you reach, reach to that platform of NSG commando and then you are trained like that. It's not easy to go to that level, in fact. So he was saying that how they were trained, uh, they would not be given even water to drink. Yesterday, Labungalata Mataji sent me some water, uh, mercifully. But <laughs> this energy commanders, they are not given water. Why? What happens? Like he was saying that, that you have to run, you have to run on the like climb, tra do trekking, you run and climb that mountain and then you become tired and you get thirsty. I want water. Oh, water! You get water in that mountain, that hilltop you will get one water. So again, you go come down from this mountain and go to that mountain. And then you find, oh, there is not much. There's only one glass of water. Only one glass of water and there are 20 or 30 commandos. So how can 30 people drink one glass of water? So, and that to some salty water. So then, so oh, there's wrong information is given to you. Water is not in this mountain. Water is there in that mountain. You go to that mountain. So again, they come down, walk down from that hill. And then again, they uh, climb on the other hilltop. And then they find, okay, there is water. Yeah, they're very good. There are water is there. We can drink. And you have half an hour time, 30 minutes time, water break. You drink water, take some rest, and then you again start your training. Okay. So they will go for, <laughs> they go for drinking water at the time when doctor comes, military, military doctor comes. And he said, hey, all of you guys, wait a minute. Before you drink water, you should know the qualities of water, the characteristics, the benefit of drinking water. So the military doctor gives a lecture on the benefit of drinking water for half an hour. And they say, oh, your time is up. Your time is up. You just go run. But we didn't drink water. No, no, no time there. No time. You just go and drink water. So they are not allowed to drink water. Like, And then... I think minus 25, minus 30, 30, they were saying that in that temperature, they are asked to remove their shirt and doll and get into that icy water and do their PT, do their exercise, take bath there. And in scorching, 50 degrees Celsius, scorching summer heat, and they will put a fire around. Or like they are saying, there's a burning sand. So you have to scroll in bare head, bare chested. You have to scroll from one place to another place with your, like with your skin, and then come back on your backpack, back skin. So the skins are burned. So then this interviewer asked this person, like many things he said that then you have to drink water like shitty water, like from the jungle, and you have to take it, eat, eat snake, uh, snake, snails, snails, snake, all these things you have to eat. Idea is that. So why do they do that? Idea is to make them. Mm, habituate or to make them able to survive in any condition, either heat, cold, or anything in jungle. You have to live your life. You have to survive by eating anything, snakes, snails, and drink any kind of water. So they're trained in that way. So this uh, doctor, this interviewer asked this person, this commander officer, that how is this possible? How would your body match with that? How do you do that? Won't you feel bodily discomfort and all these things? So then the person said, that, yes, initially you'd feel like this. But once you make up your mind, actually, set up your mentality that no, I have to do it. I don't have any other way. I don't have any other option to choose. I have to do this. Then gradually you become okay with that. You get that Shakti, you get that energy or you get that inner spirit to control, tolerate all these things. So when I was hearing that, um, actually someone shared with me that I was hearing, okay, like to enter the military, what all things happen, the commandos. So he was sharing that, I was thinking that, yes, like this, uh, what he said, mentality, if, if someone sets up his mind, like in the even winter also, when you wake up early morning and take bath of Mangalarati, oh, it's so cold water, I see cold water. But the once you make make up your mind, no, no matter how much cold it be, I'll take bath, I'll get get ready, go to Mangalarati. I have to go. So then it becomes easy. 
Oh, you are just like shaking your body with the water. Like you are just... So, but then once you think, no, no cold. No, I am fine. Just, just... You are strengthening your muscle. Then you feel that no cold actually just, okay. Okay, relax. It's okay. So, why I brought this point here? That even in this world, these military commandos and uh, armies, they have this understanding and they are trained in that way that you set up your mentality, make your mind so strong that you can tolerate anything. Hmm. So if through this kind of... And what is their motivation in life? Aspiration, inspiration. I have to fight for my country, save my country. So even if for this kind of motivation, this kind of... For saving country, fighting for country... They tolerate so much, so much difficulties. So if by this kind of mindset, they can do something uh, really, really next to impossible things in this world. So similarly, if we have spiritual mindset, spiritual higher goal in life, transcendental goal in life, we, we, then we can easily transcend the things of this material world. What happens, what should happen. Hmm? Like everything, like at least in, in Indian movies and doll, what they show that, okay, the person is, uh, the villain comes and he beats, punches this uh, hero and hero falls down, bleeding and all. Suddenly he remembers that, no, this person killed my father. I should kill him. So suddenly he wakes up. Even if he shoot with bullet, he wakes up and he goes and kills it. So even though I show their motivation, give some motivation, give something, remind him something, and he goes. Like, like uh, Shurpanakha went and he, she kind of, she glorified Sita. She described the beauty of Sita. And uh, she glorified Ravana that actually Ravana, you should be the husband of Sita. Sita should belong to you. And so, and then he was angered. So super Shurpanakha kind of, hmm, in the wrong way she motivated Ravana, ill-motivated. So motivation, even in this world, this is your motivation, mindset. So similarly, if we have spiritual motivation, spiritual mindset, that for Krishna, we do. For the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Supreme Lord woke up. Mangalarati. How can I sleep in the early morning, even if it's cold, winter season? How can I sleep peacefully? The Supreme Lord is giving darshan. I need to go and take his darshan. So if the spiritual motivation comes, spiritual mindset comes, then materially also other situations we can tolerate, we can handle them. Even if a person who is not, even if somebody is not waking up early in the morning, it's difficult to wake up in the morning. Oh, how come? But if he has a flight tomorrow morning to go to America, to go to Mumbai or some other place, then he will wake up. He will flight early morning. He must wake up. Then you see he will wake up. So everywhere there is a motivation. So spiritual well-being is automatically followed by material well-being. So it's a very important statement. How much conviction do we have for this? In one of our course, we were giving, not Bhakti Vaiva, but we had another course on Bhagavadam. We gave this statement as, uh, write an essay, that uh, spiritual well-being is automatically followed by material well-being. Write down how do you convince a materialist person. Hmm. So maybe you can also do as a homework. You can think of that. Either you write or think, contemplate on that. How do you convince priests to someone? Materialist. That by spiritual well-being, it's automatically followed by material well-being. What to speak of materialist person? How can you convince this? Convince even a devotee who is just here like that. Sometimes the devotee also we are not fully convinced. Hmm. So we have to be practical in this world, whatever is necessary, we do that. But at the same time, if we have that, that's Vishwas. Shraddhas, Shabde, Vishwas, Kohe, Shudrudra, Nishchoy, Krishna, Bhakti, Koile, Shurva, Karma, Krita. That's Vishwas, that's faith in Chaitanya Charita Amrita. That what is Shraddha? Shraddha means the strong faith, the strong conviction that by worshipping, serving Krishna, doing devotional service to Krishna, all other activities are fulfilled. Everything is done automatically. So that's conviction. How much do we have? If we contemplate self-contemplation, self-analysis, uh, if we do, how much conviction do I have in my life? If I do bhakti, if I serve Krishna, everything will be done easily. Like someone asked, people ask questions, oh, you do Krishna, Krishna, Krishna all the time. How will you eat? Like a common question. Even my uncle also asked me. Uh, 
in the early days in Krishna consciousness. My uncle also asked me, I remember that, oh, if you do Krishna, Krishna all the time, then um, how will you eat? Like, Krishna will come and feed you. That time I was just I was a small boy. I, we came to Krishna consciousness. So he asked me this question. Hmm? People ask this question. So, but if we have strong faith, yes, if I chant the holy name of Krishna, Krishna will give me food. I don't need to worry about that. If we have strong faith, Krishna will come and give, like Krishna would give for uh, Haridas Thakur. Hmm? Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he would go to take darshan, Jagannath, and he would take prasadam himself, and he would bring it for, he would go to meet Haridas Thakur. Every day he would go to meet Haridas Thakur, and he would take that food, prasadam of Jagannath and give it, give to him. Some days he would send through his servant Govinda to Haridas Thakur, send it, it to Haridas. Hmm? So Supreme Lord himself is bringing prasadam for it. Haridas is sitting and just chanting. Haridas Thakur is sitting and chanting, that's all. He is chanting the holy name purely. And the Supreme Lord is bringing Mahaprasad for him. If we have the strong conviction, strong faith, really surrender to Krishna, Krishna will bring Yoga Kshemam Bahamiyaham, the story of Arjuna Acharya, Arjun Mishra. Supreme Lord himself, he took rice, grain, everything on his back, on his shoulder, and he carried and brought for um, Arjun Mishra for his devotee. Gita Panda, the story is there. So, he raised Gita. So, yeah. If we have the faith, Krishna will bring for us. That's for sure. Hmm? But how much faith do we have for that? Okay, so now comes very interesting verse. Hmm? Good qualities or ornamental qualities of Kaliuga people. Kaliuga people that are blessed with such good qualities. What are those? For learned one, in this iron age of Kali, men have but short lives. They are quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky, and above all, always disturbed. In the iron age of Kali, men have short lives. So what are they? Short life. Sutta so Goswami might propose that the sages hear everything and decide uh, what the best thing is. However, the sages request him to speak the essence considering the incompetence of Kali Yuga uh, so that they can easily execute the process to attain the ultimate goal. So this came from the Acharya's commentary that Sutta so Goswami might think that, okay, oh, I'll tell you everything, whatever I know, I'll tell you everything. And from there you, you think... Uh, Yes. Like the question, chapter, text 9, they ask the question, first question that what is the absolute and ultimate good for people in general? So Sutta Goswami might propose that, okay, I'll tell you everything, you hear everything, and then from there, you decide what is best. So that's why sages are saying that, no, 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 you don't put it on us. You decide, you tell us what is best. Uh, we don't tell us that we decide. You tell us because we are in Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga people, short lifespan, quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky, always disturbed. So you don't, you, we just request you that we don't want to waste time. That you tell us everything from that we think, we decide. No, you just tell us what's the solution, what's the thing. That's why please speak the essence. We seek the essence. That's what he says in text 11 also. Explain the essence of all scriptures. We'll see that. But before that, short lifespan, alpayushaha, quarrelsome, lazy, uh, mandaha, misguided, sumanda matayaha, unlucky, mandabhagya, and upadruta, always disturbed. Srila uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says that, that mandaha, manda means, Herr Prabhupada says manda means unlucky. Hmm? Manda, sumanda mataya, manda means they are uh, mandabhagya, unlucky. But uh, Saraswati Thakur writes in his commentary, the manda means no, yeah, this is unlucky. Yeah, one thing he said, Mandabhagya is um, unlucky. Saraswati Thakur says, says that Mandabhagya means they are devoid of Sadhu Sangha. What is unlucky? Because they are devoid of Sadhu Sangha. That's their un unluck, misfortune. They don't get Sadhu Sangha in Kali Yuga. That's, that's much they are unlucky. Hmm. And then he says that her Prabhupada says, Mandya means, um, yeah, 
lazy. And Sarasat Thakur said that why they are lazy? Because they don't have, they are like, they are not lazy in that way. They all people are also so much active. They do this, they do that, everything, everything they do in this life. But for spiritual activity, they are lazy. Spiritually, they are lazy. If you ask them, okay, let's go and have a trip to Thailand. Oh, okay, let's go. We have to get a visa. We need to get this. We need to get that. Okay, we'll do everything. We need to get money. We need to get everything we'll do. Or if you ask them, let's go and have a party next Sunday. Oh, let's go. But we need this, this. Oh, we'll arrange everything. Let's have a party. Everything they will do. But as soon as you tell them, let's go to temple. Or let's go to Vrindavan Dham to take darshan of Krishna. Oh, how can we go to Vrindavan? Or how can I go to temple? If Krishna takes us, then we can go. It's not up to us. If Krishna takes us, we'll go. Then they will be philosophical. If Krishna makes us go, then we will go. Otherwise, no. Everything else they will do. You chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra. You be you do serve Krishna. Oh, how can I do it? I don't know in other places they say like this, but in Bengal, <laughs> this is one common logic that even Saraswati Thakur wrote a story also about that. If you ask people that everything else they can do, but when you ask them to do bhakti, oh, they will give lots of excuses. Hmm. Upadrutaha diseased, always disturbed by different diseases. That's another thing. Always Upadruta. Even if someone out of all the in, in spite of being short life, quarrels, everything, even if someone wants to do bhakti, even if someone wants to do bhakti, it's like there's a disease and so much like things. I visited this devotee that day. He's a quite sincere devotee. Good. He was helping me. He got his cancer. So, yeah, the disease is another thing. Even if we want to do bhakti, difficult. We have back pain, neck pain, this pain, that pain, this problem, that problem. Can't wake up, can't chant properly, can't go for this book distribution. So many excuses, so many problems. What to do? So Prabhupada and Ayu, Alpayushaha. Ayushaha, Alpayusha, mega duration of life, short lived, short lives. So Prabhupada says in the purport that actually, what's the reason for our short life in Kali Yuga? Hmm? What is the reason for short life? It's it's not um, anything else, but actually we are responsible for that. We are responsible for our short life. Yeah, in Kali Yuga, duration of life is shortened. Not so much because of insufficient food. It's not because of some insufficient food. Uh, not because of insufficient food, but because of irregular activities. By keeping regular active habits and eating simple food, any man can maintain, maintain his health. Overeating, sense gratification, over dependence on others' mercy, artificial standards of living sap, uh, of living sap, the very vitality of human energy. Like all this so called advancement of civilization, air pollution, water pollution, everything is polluted. So we, are, we ourselves are responsible for our short life then. Hmm? In Mumbai, Pune, Delhi, Calcutta, all these cities, you see big multi cities, how much they're polluted. In Delhi, I heard that they already, uh, many people already they use that oxygen mask for good oxygen. And uh, already, scientists they recommended people to already this started in many of the cities. It will come and it will be more prominent than that. Just like we buy bottled water, water bottle now. Earlier, some decades where people couldn't think the water will be sold like this in bottled way and you buy 20 rupees, 30 rupees, one bottle of water. But now water bottle, everywhere we go, we have to depend on water bottle only. We can't depend on other waters, mineral water, just buy water and drink. Similarly, a day will come soon. We need to buy oxygen. We will have to buy oxygen to breathe. Mm. Manda Bhagya, Prabhupada talks about Mandya Bhagya, that uh, 
another thing Prabhupada talks about what is Mandavagya? Uh, that is to say, a, a man should uh, come to know what he is, what the world is, and what the supreme truth is. Human life is means life is a means by which the living entity can end all miseries of material existence, arise in this hard struggle of for existence, and by which he can return back to Godhead. Hmm. See, Prabhupada is saying here, but uh, due to bad, a bad system of education, men have no desire for self-realization. So that's one thing, no desire. But even if, even if they come to know about it, they are unfortunately victims, become victims of misguided teachers. That's what Mandavagya. Even if some people, they have genuine interest, okay, I want to be I want to know about spirituality. I want to know what is a good path to attain God, who is God, or I want to know all these things, sense self-realization about soul. But they are victim of misguided teachers or these false pseudo-spiritualists. These or that, somewhere else, so many things are going on. You can eat meat, fish, anything, and do bhakti. In Bengal, it's, it's like this one of the common thing. Other, other things are there. So even if someone genuinely wants to progress in spiritual life, he cannot because of being misguided by these um, false propagandas and and uh, misconceptions of life. So Prabhupada says here uh, another nice statement. Let me find out what is that. Yeah, see this. Prabhupada says, In the Kali Yuga, the whole atmosphere is surcharged with faithlessness. Hmm? Whole atmosphere is itself. Atmosphere is surcharged with faithlessness. You cannot have faith in anyone. Even on sadhus also. Uh, what kind of sadhus? This happens, that happens. Uh, so whom to believe on? Only Krishna. Just have faith on Krishna and again Prabhupada. And of course, pure devotees are there, pure sadhus are there. So if that kind of pure sadhus, we are fortunate, if we are fortunate enough to have association of that kind of pure devotees, then we can have faith on them. Otherwise, God save us. That's why Prabhupada and Saraswati Thakur is also saying that. Why, how come we are so... Unfortunate because we don't have good association of devotees. So we need to really pray to Krishna to have association. It's not easy, not easy. We can have devotees, many at our own local, but to get a real devotee and get association of such devotee is really, really mm. one needs to be fortunate enough, blessed enough. Hmm? So Prabhupada is saying here that. It is going to become very difficult, therefore, to raise the spiritual standard due to the present distorted values of human society. Sages of Naimi Sharani are anxious to disentangle all fallen souls. And here they are seeking the remedy from Sri Sutta Goswami. So they are, we are grateful to them for the solution they are asking here. So in text 11 also it continues. We will study that in Today we couldn't, in this session, we couldn't progress much. So we'll study next session from text 11. Hare Krishna. Jai Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Vinavak Pranam.